The U.S. Commodity Futures Trading Commission has unveiled one of the largest cryptocurrency scams in recent history involving a South African company by the name of Mirror Trading International, run by one Cornelius Steinberg. Uh, let's take a look at some of the uh, figures. I think it came out to about $1.7 billion, yes, in a fraud case uh, involving Mr. Steinberg, who started this in 2019. South African uh, Financial uh, Conduct Authority did say that the company, uh, Mirror Trading International, did not have a license uh, at the time that it was accepting uh, cryptocurrency transactions uh, from its victims. Now, according to Chain Analysis, uh, illicit crypto transactions uh, from 2019, over $10 billion. Uh, they've actually over $14 billion as at uh, 2021. We're joined by Bio Bolu uh, Abiodu, who is a reporter with uh, TechPoint uh, Africa. Uh, Bolu, uh, you did some investigations on this, uh, this matter. You spoke to a number of people, I believe a lawyer, a blockchain lawyer, also the head of uh, Coin, was it not Coinbase? Um, the second gentleman that you spoke yes, with. Yes, Conflux, the founder of Conflux. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what, what, what have you found with respect to what's been discussed as far as the regulatory environment and this particular case? Yes, the regulatory environment in Africa and, can I say, the world generally has not really seen enough action when we talk about um, crypto scams and the entire crypto space in general. So it's something a lot of countries are, are still trying to figure out, and that's why you see um, cases like this. Uh, you see scams like this going on for quite some time. And uh, from the report, you see that um, this scam actually started. They started the company in 2019. Yeah. And then this scam went on till 2020. That's a pretty short amount of time, you know, uh, to scam people of $1.7 billion, which, you know, is a lot of money. And then we saw regulators start started coming in um, in 2020. Yeah. And the South African regulator in 2020 started investigating this issue and they discovered that um, this company did not actually have a license. Mm. And they want you know, the public not to invest in this company any longer because mm. they didn't have a license. Um, but people who run this kind of scams are pretty smart. They play on people's intelligence yeah. and they play on the fact that people are greedy. Yeah. So people still kept you know, investing in this company and they kept growing their, uh, their illicit uh, activities. You know, activities. Yeah. The numbers kept going high. And then it went all over the world. Yeah. They got people to invest from several parts of the world. And they were able to do this because they were using Bitcoin. And mm. um, Bitcoin, I'm sure, as most people know, is decentralized. Mm. It's, it crosses borders very easily, yeah. which makes it excellent to run this type of um, scam activities. So they got people to invest with Bitcoin and they grew um, 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 the amount of, of investments. So the ploy was they were running um, a, a commodities, if a foreign commodities um, pool where people will invest, put their money in, and then they will see really juicy returns, uh, I think 0.5% every day, which is a lot. But um, the truth is, after all the investigations, only a fraction of the amount they were able to raise were actually went to any type of trading at all. So the plan was, OK, bring in your money. We invest uh, in Forex for you. And then there was also another very juicy bit about yeah. um, the plan. They told people they were going to use um, artificial intelligence to run um, these trades, and which doesn't make any sense because it's, 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 it's Forex, you know, you can't really predict what happens, whether you're AI, whether you're a human being, you can't predict what's going to happen. And then there was no such, you know, when uh, investigators started looking into this issue, they saw that there was no form of AI, there were no bots doing um, any transactions. And then um, to an extent, you know, people actually thought that this was something legit because they actually had a broker, mm. uh, FX Choice was yeah. their broker, but, um, after some time, this broker came out to say these people were not doing things the way they were supposed to do it because when because these brokers do not only allow you to invest, uh, they only do these investments on your behalf when you are using your own money. But um, uh, 
um, MTI, Mirror Trading International, did not um, disclose to FX Choice that they were using other people's money to run um, the trades. And so when FX Choice, you know, told them they weren't going to do this anymore, uh, they went on to another broker, which, to be honest, the existence of that broker is is, is very doubtful because yeah. it's, it's as if it doesn't even exist at all. And I think, you know, this thing, like I said, started in 2019. It has been running on for some time. And the reason why the CFTC, the uh, Commodities Futures Trading Commission of the U.S., is now coming out um, to, to um, charge um, this, to charge MTI, is because a lot of Americans actually were part of the were victims of these scams. Yeah. Yes. So um, 23,000 Americans, the last time I checked, uh, invested in these scams. But it was not just Americans. It was Nigerians. It's uh, people from Namibia, Spain, Canada, the UK. And then you start seeing that, you know, when you look at, you know, the uh, people from these countries that were scammed, you start seeing that the entire regulatory space, when we talk about cryptocurrencies, the regulatory space is practically even non-existent. But it's, to be fair, we've been seeing um, some action. We yeah, the SEC, seen, yes, for instance, for, right? Right, exactly. that's here in Nigeria. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, before, before we even talk about you know, Nigeria, um, the US recently in March, uh, uh, they released a, um, an executive order mm. on cryptocurrencies, you know, trying to figure out what are these things, how can they help us, because you have to admit, this market is growing. It started as, as something small, you know, in 2008 when Satoshi Nakamoto um, released, you know, built... His you white know, paper. <laughs> His yeah. famous white paper. Yes. Yeah. And now it's blowing up. Um, as at 2021, uh, bull run, or was it 2020, the entire crypto market was over a trillion uh, in market capitalization. Yeah. And, you know, since then, every economy in the world, every forward-thinking economy of the world has been seeing... You know, we need to regulate this in some way. And then we've started seeing these moves. Even the UK recently made a move on you know, how um, crypto exchanges, crypto companies will operate. And in Nigeria, you know, we've we actually seen some really interesting things going on. Uh, you know, uh, in last year, the CBN, you know, uh, banned... I won't call it a ban. They actually restricted financial institutions from, from facilitating, facilitating crypto, crypto transactions. transactions. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of, there was a lot of backlash. And, you know, looking at it now in hindsight, that was, uh, I would describe that as a serious misunderstanding of, you know, a way to regulate this space. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, to justify what the CBN did, it's not really in their, in their place um, to do things like this. It's more... Uh, in SEC. line with the SEC. So, you know, the SEC regulates things like stocks, securities. Mm. So the SEC, the Nigerian SEC, I would say, have been very forward thinking. I wouldn't say they, they are perfect, but um, when you um, compare what other countries in the world are doing as regards cryptocurrency, you really have to commend the SEC. Their recent um, uh, regula yeah, yes, regulatory framework, the regulatory that framework they put out, yeah. out was quite impressive. It showed a deeper level of understanding of what the crypto space is all about than what, you know, the CBN did. Well, the CBN <laughs> is not budging, budging. Let me, I'll tell you that. They are not budging one inch. So it's going to be very interesting to see how exactly. uh, that, that, that plays exactly, out. Exactly, yeah. exactly. It's going to be very interesting. Bolu, senior uh, reporter at uh, TechPoint, really appreciate your time coming to talk to us about this. This We're going to have more headlines. Bolu Abiodun, we're going to have more headlines on this because it just keeps happening over and over again. So thanks for joining us. Appreciate your You're time. Welcome.